If you want to know what makes a place tick, look no further than the food they eat. When we arrived in Israel, we immersed ourselves by sampling as much of the cuisine as possible. Over the course of one week, we tried fancy dinners and coffee carts, kosher restaurants, and very much not kosher restaurants, from one end of the country to the other. We love food. And while our family has some food sensitivities with gluten and dairy, Israel had no problem filling up our bellies and our hearts with a colorful and flavorful culinary tour of the land. Hey friends, Laura from the future here real quick. This video series has not been easy to produce. Given all of the current events taking place around Israel right now and the conflict going on with Hamas, we understand that tensions are high and the news coming at you is frequent. We were hoping that these videos would give you a little glimpse into the humanity of the citizens who live in the region and to help you see some of the beauty of the area. This barrage of images can be really dehumanizing and we're hoping to fix that just a little bit with a little bit of beauty and joy in your day. Specifically with this video, a number of these restaurants and establishments that we went to were small businesses owned by entrepreneurs who are struggling right now. So if there's anything you can do to support them now or in the future, we really wanna encourage you to do that. Also, I say this as much as I can with any of the videos that specifically focus on food and eating gluten and dairy free. If you have a food restriction or are reactive to foods, please do your due diligence. Menus change, staffing changes, cross-contamination happens, you might have a different experience than we did. So while these places were safe for us, please, please do your homework to make sure you're getting food that's safe for you. And one more thing, we're really, really trying to reach a thousand subscribers on the channel by the end of the year. So if you really like this video, or maybe you've been around for a few videos, please, please subscribe and join us. We would love to have you along on the journey. Our first nice dinner was at a kosher restaurant, and you don't typically see us eat a lot of meat on this channel, but we will if it's kosher meat. And as a dairy-free family, going to a kosher meat restaurant is extra helpful because kosher rules dictate that meat and milk are never served together, so we knew that we wouldn't even have to ask about dairy ingredients in their cooking. We went to alaish, which means on the fire or barbecue where the chicken, beef, and lamb skewers were grilled to perfection. And for a small added charge, the meal came with an assortment of side salads. And more, more little dishes, keep them coming. Everything from slaws to pickles to dips like hummus and baba ganoush, so delicious. And all these sides were only 25 shekels per person. It was so much. We so rarely eat meat, and this was enough to give us the meat sweats, but it was delicious. All washed down with a mint lemonade. Over and over again, we found gluten-free food easily as well. Every establishment we went to had English menus and helpful English-speaking staff to assist us in finding foods safe for our needs. My kids were thrilled to get french fries from a dedicated fryer, and they were able to make the falafel in the dedicated fryer too upon request. Alaish is located in Moda'in, halfway between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. When visiting a new destination, we always look for local gluten-free folks for first-hand accounts of what restaurants are safe. We started following Jazzy, who has celiac, at The Israel Bites on Instagram, and she was so generous with information about eating gluten-free all across Israel. At Jazzy's recommendation, we knew we had to check out the coffee cart scene. We thought for sure this random dead end meant Google Maps had sent us the wrong way. And if you want to drive like a local, you should use Waze. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Other people are coming for a coffee, it's gotta be good. But through the gate was the cutest coffee cart, Bloom's Coffee. There was a good assortment of gluten-free and dairy-free sweet treats, and the little kids got apple juice while we ordered an ice latte, a matcha, and this gorgeous cold brew, all with plant-based milk. The atmosphere was perfect, with various seating areas and local artist shops nearby. Mm -hmm. 
But we didn't stay long because we had an epic grocery store to get to. Before we started our gluten-free, dairy-free diet, we didn't ever consider utilizing the kitchens in our Airbnbs for more than storing the occasional snack. But now we really enjoy a mix of eating out and filling in the gaps with smaller meals cooked in our own kitchen. And Mercaza was the most incredible way to stock that kitchen. That's what she said. Do, 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 no, do, do, I'm not putting do, 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 any do, do, more do. that's and she said's on the channel. Wait, that's how committed we are to getting you B-roll. We will drive back and forth in front of it. It's very great. Okay. Can you help me navigate? Located just outside Nazareth, Mercaza is like the IKEA of grocery stores. In fact, they have a whole floor of home goods, toys, and decor that look a lot like an IKEA. The produce section was gorgeous but they also had a full selection of gluten-free items. You can see how we grilled a feast with some of our shopping in our video about glamping at the Dead Sea. I'll be honest, I got lost trying to take my groceries back to the car in the garage and then re-enter to find the food court for our lunch. I could not figure out which elevator to take to which floor. This place is massive. Let me show you our Airbnb in Tel Aviv, in the trendy little neighborhood of Nevzedek. After a long day of touring in the August Israel heat, it was nice to have a home of our own to settle into. We often made breakfasts in the morning before hitting the road. Nick would walk to the nearby Hatechana Park to the Akbar coffee shop and pick up some delicious caffeinated beverages for the adults while I would concoct some kind of breakfast for the kids at the apartment. The Airbnb allowed us to play one of our favorite vacation games. What would it be like if we lived here? Do you play that game when you travel? For our day in Jerusalem, we went to one of the places we had heard Jazzy rave about the most. Kaze, a 100% gluten-free pizza and wine bar with incredible pasta and pastry options and lots to choose from for our dairy-free diet. The seating was limited, but we ended up outside and the breezy shade was lovely. We started out ordering pizza and pasta, but then I started asking what was dairy-free in the pastries and he showed me some of the desserts, the cookies have butter, but all the other desserts that were available and some of the other pastry items like the barrecas with um, potato inside are dairy free, which is shocking for paste, like a puff pastry kind of uh, crust. So I'm really excited to try those. this for later. In Jerusalem, you must go to the market, or shuk, to experience the quintessential buzz and bustle of the city. All the open air bakeries just smell so good. I'm a sucker for a good pastry. At Machne Yehuda Market, we found loads of gluten-free vendors starting with glueless. They had fluffy breads, pitas, and halas that you would not believe were gluten-free. There were lots of familiar brands on their shelves and some interesting new things too. This market is full of diverse cuisine and cultures and the colors and smells were dizzying. At Hummus Eliyahu, which we'd seen good reviews of on the Find Me Gluten-Free app, they had lots of gluten-free signage. We didn't sit down for a full meal, but we were able to pick up some hummus and halva for later at dinner. Our last stop was at Judith, a bakery that had just opened a few days before our visit. The owner also owns a loaded potato bar next door that is gluten-free too. 
but we were here for the marble cake and the challah bread. The market was a swirl of cultures and people that made this a perfect introduction to Jerusalem. Just because we're in Israel doesn't mean it can't be Taco Tuesday. Now we head back to Tel Aviv, a true modern city with a coastal beachy vibe that reminds me of part New York and part Miami. Yep, that's how you spell taqueria with Hebrew letters. The corn tortillas and extensive vegan options made this an easy, gluten-free, dairy-free destination for our family. And the burritos had the option of subbing a red lentil tortilla, which I really liked. I never get a full-size burrito option. The kids tacos had beans, while Nick went for mushrooms. And of course, a margarita. The customers and staff were all young and hip, like so much of Tel Aviv. And, as is often the case in this city, this was a non-kosher establishment, in case the prawns and pork shoulder on the menu didn't tip you off. Axon fell asleep before we made it to tacos. But those tacos were really yummy. What's more is the menu was really well labeled. So, great option if you're looking for gluten-free or vegan. Sometimes the food we eat on the channel is about finding that groundbreaking gluten-free thing you can never get your hands on. But tonight was more about adding a little variation to our Israel experience because the kids have now had some more traditional Israeli foods with all those dips and salads and um, things like that for a few days in a row now and they were ready to get a little bit of a different cuisine. So to be able to get tacos and Mexican was nice. And it got us out of Nevzetic to see more of Tel Aviv, still walking distance from our Airbnb, but feels very much like New York City, just everything's in Hebrew. When they say location, location, location can make or break your vacation, they were talking about choosing an Airbnb just a short walk from excellent vegan ice cream. Anita Gelato has an adorable retro style, and they can be found from Barcelona to Sydney to San Juan, and even in New York City. But we preferred the location in our Nevzetic neighborhood. The scoops were generous, and the kids got to choose two flavors in each cup. What did you get? Lunch chocolate and coconut. Dark chocolate coconut. Whoa. After a second full sunny day in the Jerusalem heat, we had a quick lunch with very tired children at Cafe Nadi. The fresh fruit smoothies were the perfect pick-me-up. And again, that amazing gluten-free bread made for perfectly soft sandwiches with gorgeous salads on the side. Nick got a green shakshuka. How was your lunch? Good. The gluten-free bread is incredible. I don't know where they get these breads. First, the one we had at Kalia, the glam site, and now this are so good. They have mastered the art of using tapioca to make it just chewy and fluffy and not dry at all. She said, if you're not getting cream cheese on the salmon sandwich, you'll need something to make sure it's not dry. Didn't need a thing. Kind of like a brioche. Yeah, yeah. And this, Thank you so much. this has cardamom and <coughs> rose water. It kind of tastes like what walking through the shuk feels like. It was a really hot and exhausting day. Eat your vegetables, all the colors, and it will make you feel vastly better really quickly. Not to mention some of the best coffee in Jerusalem. That was amazing. I feel like it brought me back to life. <laughs> the next day back in Tel Aviv, we went for my favorite meal, a true Israeli brunch. One Israeli friend shared with me that Israel is the second most vegan-friendly country to visit after India, and I believe it. Every restaurant was filled with vegetables and colorful salads that showcased the produce from the land. 
Even the kosher meat restaurants had vegan options. We are dairy-free and we had no problem finding milk substitutes or dishes without cheese everywhere we went. This includes our breakfast at Benedict, where they serve breakfast 24-7. There was a bit of a wait for this popular spot. This is clearly the place that tourists come for breakfast, brunch, before heading to the beach because numerous people have shown up with swimsuits under their clothes and beach chairs and uh, I have heard Russian and French and what I think was Dutch and um, Italian and so uh, a very international crowd here today. As they say at Benedict, a great day starts with a great breakfast. And Nick got eggs with an assortment of sides and dips, but I went with the traditional shakshuka with runny eggs and soft gluten-free bread for dipping. I finally got one in the package so we can identify what it is. This vegan cream cheese is wildly good. Shakshuka. We can't recommend this place enough before a busy day in Tel Aviv playing on the beach or taking in an art museum. On our Tel Aviv day, we went to Sorona Market, an indoor market much like something you'd find in New York City, but with a distinctly Israeli flavor. Hey, we have a Miznon at Chelsea Market in NYC. One shop, Anis, was full of vegan and gluten-free treats, which was perfect for us because the next day we were flying home and needed to pack some food for the plane. We even found our favorite green light breads in the freezer case. And it was fun to see some of our favorite brands from home, but with Hebrew packaging. Why are you getting married to tomatoes? From Sorona Market, we walked about 20 minutes past the Israeli Opera and the Tel Aviv Museum of Art to Malka for a final night feast to cap off our vacation. Malka is the trendy kosher meat restaurant of celebrity chef Eyal Shani, meaning we didn't have to worry about dairy ingredients and we could eat the meat options and we were ready to be blown away by not only the authentic flavors, but the energy and happiness of the atmosphere. The vast majority of the dishes are naturally gluten-free, so we chose from those rather than adapting things to our needs. We started with wine from Israeli vineyards. Tomatoes are a quintessential ingredient here. They're even used as decor, so we had to get those. But the other sides had layer upon layer of richness as well. And the beef carpaccio with shaved horseradish was stellar. That's so good. <laughs> is it the horseradish? It's it's actually the charcoal plus the salt plus the horseradish. The char? Unreal. For my entree, I ordered the lamb osobuco. It was fall off the bone tender with the softest squash and a rich broth and a whole bunch of roasted grapes still on the vine. The kids love this dish. Nobody even asked for ketchup. I've never in my life even had the opportunity to try asabuco. So here we go. Really good, really good lamb. And Nick got a whole branzino with loads of roasted vegetables. Asher tried eating the fish eyeball. Ready? Okay. The two dessert options that were gluten and dairy free as is were a chocolate tart with coffee cream and a panna cotta. So pretty. 
me, I assumed looking at this, it was going to have this like gelatinous chunkiness. This has a really nice like creaminess and like a rose water syrup. There's a pistachio rose water, yeah. Almost like real fun. With a coffee cream. I'm like no notes. I would like a do-over on dinner where I get four of them. <laughs> Gosh. This was a meal we will never forget. We were excited to learn that Maka will be opening in New York City soon and we can't wait to visit. We had ice cream before dinner. So I went in there completely full and still ate it all. As a bonus, we found a great gluten-free surprise at Ben Gurion Airport right before our red eye back to JFK. A gluten-free vending machine. While the kids played at the play area in the terminal, I taste tested the red lentil wrap with turkey and cabbage slaw. Oh, here's my part. No. Wanna try it? No. Wanna try it? That's weird. The wrap is very gummy. It's sticking to my fingers. And there's like one slice of chicken or turkey pastrami in there with a bunch of cabbage. So most of the flavor is cabbage because I don't think there's any mayo or anything there to give it a creaminess. So it's a little bit bitter, a little bit crumbly and kind of what you think a vending machine wrap would be but it's an option the red lentil wrap is gummy and crumbly but the turkey pastrami is good and there's some hummus in there so it's not altogether a loss i don't know for 25 shako i would want more than a turkey roll up but it's okay since coming home, we keep finding ourselves making hummus and shakshuka and schnitzel. It's clear that the food of Israel left an impact on us that we won't soon forget. Join us next time to see some incredible family-friendly sites all around Israel. We'll see you next time, travelers.